This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Audit, IT, and cybersecurity skills become outdated in about 18 months. If you run an IT, cybersecurity, or audit department, or lead a learning and development group, ACI Learning can craft an effective, affordable training solution to keep your team future-proof. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit to elevate your talent. So, I knew it. Uh-oh. Now, that's not as I-K-N-E-W-I-T. Uh, it's N-U-I-T, which in French means nighttime. Nuit. Knew it. Nuit. And nuit. Nuit. Okay. <laughs> the nights you say nui. Nui. Uh, it's an acronym in this case for near ultrasound inaudible trojan oh boy that doesn't sound good uh-huh. not, <laughs> not good that sound good and so yes some clever researchers are again going to entertain us with their out-of-the-box thinking Researchers from the University of Texas at San Antonio and the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs recently published a paper for presentation, or I should say submitted, because it's not published yet, submitted a paper for presentation during the upcoming USENIX Security 2023 conference being held in April next month. It demonstrates a novel, inaudible voice Trojan attack, which exploits vulnerabilities of smart device microphones and voice assistants, you know, like Siri, Google Assistant, Alexa, Cortana, and so on. The researchers used their near ultrasound inaudible Trojan, N-U-I-T, to attack different types of smart devices. Bridging from smartphones to smart home devices, or sometimes just within the smart the, the, the smartphone itself. The results of their demonstrations show that NUIT is effective in maliciously controlling the voice interfaces of popular tech products and that those oh. tech products which are currently on the market oh. are vulnerable. Oh, this is really bad. It's not good. It takes advantage of the fact that digital assistants use microphones which accurately pick up sounds that are inaudible to the human ear. NUIT plays sounds in the near ultrasound frequency range from 16 to 20 kilohertz, which enables it to give voice commands to both close and more remote smart devices. Yeah, because that travels really well, that high, high it frequency does. stuff. Wow. Now, their research demonstrated that NUIT style near ultrasound commands can be embedded pretty much anywhere. An attacker could direct, and the demos, they've got like, you just play a YouTube and, and your phone Ugh. lights up and does something. Oh, this is it's terrible. Really, oh. It's freaky. So an attacker could direct a victim to click a link to a website that would play some audio or a YouTube video that would then play the inaudible voice commands. The researchers demonstrated that NUITs also work when playing from one phone, which controls another. Mm. over Zoom calls, mm. playing playing on a phone to control a smart speaker or another IoT device, or even embedded into files that have background music, and it'll still work through that. Once, they've, once they have unauthorized access to a device, hackers can send inaudible action commands to reduce a device's volume and prevent the voice assistant's response from being heard by the user before proceeding with further attacks. Okay, so I was unable to find their full research paper online, and the Usenix conference, as I mentioned, isn't until next month. So some puzzles remain. In some summary coverage published by their universities, they, they're quoted saying that to wage a successful attack against voice assistant devices, the length of malicious commands must be shorter than 0 0.77 seconds. Oh, that's pretty quick. So that, yeah, so, so three quarters of a second. But we don't know why that's the case until their, for, their formal paper is published. They did add that the vulnerability is created due to the nonlinearity of the microphone design, which the manufacturer would need, they said, to address. 
and the researchers said that out of the 17 smart devices they tested, Apple's Siri devices alone needed to capture and reuse, that is, replay their user's voice, while other voice assistant devices were activated by using any voice or a robot voice. They also pointed out that the attack could be surreptitious because it was possible to silence Siri's response since iPhones maintain separate volumes for Siri and non-Siri output. Um, and of course, as, as anyone knows who's been around voice assistants, uh, they, you know, the uh, users of voice assistants experience odd triggering events, right? Where this, you know, where it didn't appear that the system was being addressed when it suddenly woke up and said, you know, hey, boss, what do you want? So, you know, we know that these are the result of their microphones hearing and responding to a much wider range of frequencies than, than, than humans do and constantly listening for, for that, that, that trigger. So there's still a lot that we don't know about the mechanism of the attack. But um, there is an interesting opportunity for a bit of science and math conjecture here. There was the comment made that the attack is due to nonlinearities in the operation of these microphones. And that provided the clue for me. That almost certainly means that the instantaneous response to air pressure sound waves is not linear. Now, if the response was nonlinear at normal operating volume, the result would be unacceptable distortion. That's what we call distortion. But the nonlinearity is likely to be extreme at very low volume levels where that nonlinearity doesn't matter. Anytime you have a nonlinear response, the addition of two inputs along that nonlinear response curve is wonderfully turned into multiplication. And although this may initially be counterintuitive, you know, this is the principle of logarithms, and it's the way a slide rule, which adds linear lengths, is able to produce multiplication. The scales of a slide rule are logarithmically nonlinear. So when you're adding linear lengths on a slide rule, you're performing multiplication. This means that if we had two sine waves at very low volume, their summation by the device's microphone having a nonlinear response at low volume would have the effect of multiplying their values in real time. Instead of adding, so they'd, they'd multiply. Instead of adding, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So next, we add one of my favorite trigonometric identities. Don't we all have a favorite trigonometric identity? Which states that the product of two sine waves is equal to the sum and the, the, the sum and difference of their frequencies. And Leo, you have your amateur radio operator's license. I so do. you know yeah. of this as heterodyning. Mm. In radio, heterodyning is the way a radio's local oscillator is able to bring a radio frequency signal down into audible frequency range. What we hear is the difference between the two frequencies, neither of which are audible, and that's exactly what's happening here mm. in this attack. The researchers are generating a pair of near ultrasonic frequencies whose difference is the voice signal that they're using to control other devices. We don't hear anything, but the microphones in these devices, which are always straining to hear our commands, believe that they're hearing our voice because inaudible sine waves are being made to heterodyne. Wow. That's Isn't quite that clever. Cool? Yeah. 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 And, of course, a problem because now, you know, regular audio stuff, you know, audio material from wherever uh, uh, could be containing uh, commands that we can't hear. Mm. So, and they, their demonstrations are, uh, are really chilling. So anyway, I'll keep my eye out for the paper uh, when it's published next month. And uh, if it's, if there's anything more, we'll, we'll loop back to it. <laughs>